centenarian shares her secret for a long life. Involuntary migrant accused of attempting to sell rental car. In the region, emerging economy leaders meet at 11th BRICS Summit in Brazil. And internationally, can the new Zimbabwean dollar relieve a chronic cash crunch? Greetings. Welcome to this edition of Headline News Update. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. I am now GT to the bone. Those were the words of Director General in the Ministry of the Presidency, Joseph Harmon, today as he announced that he has relinquished his American citizenship. Director General Harmon was one of four government ministers who were compelled to resign after the Caribbean Court of Justice reaffirmed that Guyana's constitution bars dual citizens from serving in the National Assembly. Prior to the CCJ ruling, he served as Minister of State. Mr. Harmon is also the second former government minister to relinquish a foreign citizenship after former Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich formally reannouncing his British citizenship earlier this year. According to Harmon, he was informed of his application's approval in early October. It is now expected for him to be a candidate for the coalition during the next year's general elections. Georgetown resident Michel Liverpool has reached a milestone that few are fortunate enough to reach, celebrating your 100-year birthday. Esther Sobers tells us more. Born only days after the end of World War I, Michelle Liverpool, a centenarian, feels like a princess every day, as she is grateful to have lived a fruitful life. Today, she was joined by friends, and loved ones to celebrate her 100th birthday. Liverpool originates from Namrik Parika, East Bank Esequibo. The farming area was quiet. Yes, and it was quiet. Okay. We had no um, thing. It was quite nice, along with the other elderly people, mm -hmm. everybody, auntie, uncle, you know. So you're 100 now. Um, are you happy with how your life has been? Is there anything you would change about it? I thank God I did not know. I didn't know I would reach that age. But you're happy about it. God, I have my children and the grandchildren around. Thank God for them. Everybody looking at me. Having seen so much over the past century, she remains filled with love and support from her four children, her grandchildren and great-grands. She also shared her secret to making it to 100. What am I saying? I eat and drink whatever. Uh -huh. you I like, huh? Anything favorite? I like this fufu soup, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. netaji planting, with cassava and dashing, mm -hmm. and ginger beer. And um, lemon or lime juice, mm -hmm. you know, when you deal with them. I always like to ask people like you who've seen life for a hundred years, 1919 to 2019, as a long period. What advice would you give to young people today? Well, I have to tell them, look up to the maker and uh, do the right thing. Be kind to everyone. Do not get themselves mixed up in other t people's story, you know. Mm -hmm. And go to the church and be kind to everybody. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. Coming up after the break, involuntary migrant accused of attempting to sell rental cars.
Mason Francois chocolate here. It's a lip really kick teasing your taste buds. It's handmade, it's chocolate, it's true. It's healthy, organic, delicious, and nutritious. Have a taste of our chocolates, cakes, and much more in a variety of flavors like never before. Try our peppermint, walnut ginger, coconut rum cream, and pistachio. Only at Mason Chocolate here. 45 Garnet Street, Georgetown, and also indulge in our Saturday and Sunday breakfast, lunch, and afternoon tea only by reservations. Telephone 648-2619. Mason Francois Chocolate Seal, the best chocolates you ever have. Welcome to Kisoon's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center, where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. be nice if we didn't have so much waste to dispose of in the landfill? Well, composting can help us reduce the waste we dispose of by turning our organic waste into compost, which can be used to improve the quality of our soil. Composting is very simple and convenient. You can compost using organic waste such as vegetable skins. Or fallen leaves and cut grass and put this in a composting bin or pile. Compost can help your garden grow healthy plants while reducing your volume of waste. It's a really good way to keep our communities clean and healthy. So, let's all start composting our waste. Find out how easy it is. Call us on 226-2189 or 227-8429 or visit our website, moc.gov.gy. A message from the Ministry of Communities in collaboration with the Inter-American Development Bank. Are you running out of ideas of what gift to buy? Scared of getting the wrong size or color or something they already have? Why not try a gift certificate from John Lewis Styles? Available in any dollar value and can be used towards clothing, shoes, and accessories. Let the person choose exactly what they want and they'll definitely be happy. Gift certificates can also be used as employee bonuses, sales incentives, and office gift exchanges. So try our gift certificates today. John Lewis Styles, simply different. Welcome back. Today is World Diabetes Day 2019, and it is being recognized under the theme Family and Diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic medical condition in which sugar or glucose levels builds up in your bloodstream. The hormone insulin helps move the sugar from your blood into your cells, which are where the sugar is used for energy. In type 2 diabetes, your body's cells aren't able to respond to the insulin as well as they should. Diabetes Day was created in 1991 by the International Diabetes Federation and the World Health Organization to raise awareness in response to rising diabetes rates worldwide, and it was made an official United Nations holiday in 2006. It's recognized on November 14th because that's the birthday of Sir Frederick Banting, who discovered insulin along with Charles Bess in 1921. IDF is raising awareness of the impact that diabetes has on the family and support network for those affected, and promoting the role of the family in the management, care, prevention, and education of diabetes. Left untreated or unmanaged, diabetes can lead to life-threatening complications. Those include blindness, amputation, kidney failure, heart attacks and stroke. Diabetes was responsible for 4 million deaths in 2017. Test early to prevent diabetes. One local businessman received the shock of his life when he learned that one of his customers was in the process of selling one of his rental cars. Here is more from Esther Sobers. Being in the car rental business has its rewards and disappointments. It is a risky and expensive business that is built on a concept even more valuable than the vehicles they rent and trust. One must trust that the renter will return the car in an undamaged state, but sometimes unscrupulous renters will abuse this trust. 
This is something 24-year-old businessman Takuru Prasad now knows all too well. He was shocked to learn that one customer was actually in the process of selling one of his rental cars. Prasad, who didn't want to appear on camera, recounted the troubling tale. A month ago, this guy, um, Andre, I know him very well, Andre Wilkinson. He came and he rent this vehicle from me, PSS 5238, and he went out. And about, roughly about, I was getting some payment problem with him, so, um, you know, he had to return the vehicle. Two weeks, or maybe one week after that, some two persons came by my home and they said to come to uplift the vehicle. I, so I was like, surprised, so wanted to know why they come to uplift the vehicle. Prasad showed headline news agreement of sale allegedly created by Andrew Wilkinson, an involuntary migrant residing on the east bank of Danrara. The vehicle, a 2008 Toyota Premio, was sold for $1.4 million. The purchaser, Carlos Anthony, had already paid half the purchase cost. After learning of what was transpiring, the duo decided to report the matter to the Ghana Police Fraud Department, located in Brigdam Police Station. Went down to the fraud department, and I think they, they meet with um, someone there named Wins, and they call me, and they asked me to turn up there with all my documents. So I went there with all my documents pertaining to the vehicle. And um, the guy Wins says, you're gonna call me back. And um, I leave the documents with him, the registration and all the other relevant documents. He says he's gonna call me back. And to this date, um, he didn't call me you know, as yet. And Prasad claims that despite being presented with the agreement of sale, the police have yet to charge Wilkinson for fraud. This led Prasad to question why hasn't anyone paid attention to his case despite providing evidence and personal information against the alleged perpetrator. Worse yet, the purchaser, Carlos Anthony, revealed that he has yet to be refunded the $720,000 he paid Wilkinson. How much money have you received back from that $720,000? Manager. So what do you plan to do? Uh, I'm giving it up to like the next week. That right now, I, for work on me, it's really busy. They say don't get a chance to do something right now. Have you been in contact with Andre? Sometimes he would call or with him. And what does he tell and you about your money? In this day, I haven't really been in contact with him. And what does he tell you? Huh? And what he tells you when he calls? Basically, he tells me that he's walking out. Okay. And um, the police at the fraud department, they, they, know, they are aware of this? Have they called you? him wanting to pay you back the money? Have you guys tried to settle this matter? No, well, it was to settle, but nothing formal in the Anthony plans to continue to wait for his money to be returned, whilst Prasad continues to press the matter since he could have lost his vehicle. Headline News attempted to contact the fraud department at Breakdown for more information on the case. We were informed that there is no contact number for that department, and we will have to visit the department to make inquiries. Headline News will continue to follow this case and update you as more details arise. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. When we return, emerging economy leaders meet at 11 BRICS Summit in Brazil. And can the new Zimbabwean dollar relieve a chronic cash crunch? Are you running out of ideas of what gift to buy? Scared of getting the wrong size or color or something they already have? Why not try a gift certificate from John Lewis Styles? Available in any dollar value and can be used towards clothing, shoes, and accessories. Let the person choose exactly what they want and they'll definitely be happy. 
Gift certificates can also be used as employee bonuses, sales incentives, and office gift exchanges. So try our gift certificates today. John Lewis Styles, simply different. Are you kidding me? Really? So, so wrong. That is not what we were taught at the Green Generation Guyana Camp. Is this the correct way to do it? Drivers, you have two options that you can use. First, you can temporarily put your empty plastic bottles in the trunk of your vehicle or on the ground on the passenger side next to you. Or secondly, place them in the nearest garbage bin you see. We need you to play your part in helping us keep the environment clean and healthy. A message from the Ministry of Communities, Green Generation Guyana Sanitation Program. For more information, please contact us on 592-227-2605 or you may find us on the World Wide Web at www.moc.gov.gy. Mason Francois Chocolatier is a lick with a kick, teasing your taste buds. It's handmade, it's chocolate, it's true. It's healthy, organic, delicious, and nutritious. Have a taste of our chocolates, cakes, and much more in a variety of flavors like never before. Try our peppermint, walnut ginger, coconut rum cream, and pistachio only at Mason Chocolatier. 45 Garnet Street, Georgetown, and also indulge in our Saturday and Sunday breakfast, lunch, and afternoon tea only by reservations. Telephone 648 2619. Mason Francois Chocolate Hill, the best chocolates you ever have. Welcome to Kasoon's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years from our hands to your home. We also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of pets and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. Welcome back. In the region, a summit of the world's five biggest emerging economies, now in its 11th year called BRICS, has begun in Brazil's capital, Al Jazeera's Manuel Rapallo reports. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro greeted the leaders of Russia, China, India, and South Africa for the 2019 BRICS summit. The theme of what is now the 11th summit of the so-called BRICS nations is economic growth for an innovative future. We BRICS countries we are going to send out a strong message to the international community that we are defending strongly the multilateral system, a more open, free, fair international trade system. One controversial topic at this year's gathering is the question of Venezuela, which has put Brazil at odds with Russia and China. On Wednesday, fights broke out on the street in front of the Venezuelan embassy in Brasilia between supporters of Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro and supporters of opposition leader Juan Guaido. Military police were called to the embassy as rival factions fought over control of the diplomatic compound. It was assaulted. It was irresponsibly attacked by criminal groups and it is currently under siege. We have unrecognized people inside the facilities. International law is being violated. The Geneva Convention is being violated. We call on the international community to speak out. There were also other protests in the Brazilian capital. Some were against the visit of Chinese President Xi Jinping, with demonstrators showing solidarity with the ongoing protests in Hong Kong. The BRICS summit is taking place during an especially tumultuous time in Latin America. Discussions over the ongoing crisis in Venezuela, as well as the recent resignation of Bolivian President Evo Morales, are likely to take place among BRICS leaders, though not publicly. Despite the obvious differences in geopolitical agendas, the focus of this year's BRICS summit continues to be the strengthening of international trade. China is our first trading partner and together with my entire team, as well as the Brazilian business community, we want not to just expand, we want to diversify our trade relations. 
The BRIC countries represent more than 40 percent of the world's population and almost a quarter of global GDP. Manuel Rapalo, Al Jazeera, Brasilia. And internationally, Zimbabwean dollar notes have been reissued for the first time in 10 years. The currency was scrapped because of hyperinflation. Al Jazeera's Haru Matasa has more. Queues outside banks in Zimbabwe disappeared when there was hardly any cash available. Most transactions were made electronically. Now, for the first time in a decade, Zimbabwean dollar notes are back. But there are only a few in circulation. That's why some Zimbabweans feel nothing will change. The government is now operating in panic mode. And uh, this desperate uh, decision of bringing in new notes is not going to help Zimbabweans. Most banks are limiting individuals' withdrawals to just 20 US dollars a week. Inflation is in the triple digits. Many here say that's not enough for them to cope with constant fuel shortages and the price of basic commodities going up every week. People are not getting the money that they want. They're only getting $100, which is not enough. Only two, it's only, it can only buy about two, two, two bottles of uh, cooking oil, two liter cooking oil, so it's not much. In 2009, Zimbabwe dumped its currency when it led to hyperinflation, widespread unemployment, soaring food prices and shortages of basic goods. The US dollar and other foreign currencies were made legal tender, but that didn't turn the economy around. Four years ago, the government introduced bond notes and coins. Zimbabweans were told their value was based on the US dollar, but few people believe that. And on the black market, they kept losing value. Now, some people fear these new notes and coins will again cause hyperinflation. Others fear history could repeat itself if the government prints these new notes recklessly. 10, 11 years ago, we were going through that very process and government was printing such vast quantities of money that we were working into billions and trillions to buy ordinary things like bread. And the danger of that happening again is real. We have to hope that government's recollections of what happened because of that are bright enough and strong enough for them to say we must avoid doing anything which is that irresponsible. The government says there will be no reckless printing and that the new notes will ease cash shortages. But people are skeptical. This bank ran out of cash in less than four hours, leaving many customers frustrated and again uncertain about their country's economic future. Harumatasa, Al Jazeera, Harare. Here's the three-day weather forecast. this edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. Tune in on Friday at 6 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube, or you can visit our website at headlinenewsguyana.com for more news. Until then, take care.